Buster. We better mosey on back to the ship. Whoa. Stop the presses. What? Looks like old Charlie Charming's got a little business to attend to. Can I fight? Hey, give me a quarter. Why? I'm gonna find out my future. Let's have it. What's in store for me, Pop? Uh, I guess I just want to know about my son. Will he, uh... Is he gonna grow up all right? Things gonna work out for him? It... It looks like a fish? Death? Wait, what? What does that mean? Hey, what does that mean? What the hell, man? Hey, bud, let me get a go at it. Oh, yeah? Think you got the stuff? Fight? Sure. Let me another quarter. I'm gonna start a tab. I'll give it a whirl. Have a nice day. Hey, Chuck, we better get back to the ship. We don't come on, man. Just let me ask another question. We really need to get back. M2! Cargo hold two!
Howdy, Charlie. How's your time off? Just get me out of here already. What the hell's going on out there? Heard it. Me too. And there was a... a corpse. What? In the sick bay. Something's wrong. Let's get out of here. And then son. God damn, another stick? God, no. Charlie!
Hello! And welcome to my repository. Curator, the curator of stories, stories of love and hate, greed and beauty, life and death, stories such as this one. I'm here to record the story you choose to tell. You see, this tale is only part written, and the choices you make will complete it and determine whether the lives of those with whom you are interfering continue to flourish or whether they are snuffed out. You see, we each make decisions according to our own moral compass, and we have to live with those decisions or die by them. But you shouldn't fear death. It is, after all, inevitable. It is the tax one pays for having lived, and it comes, eventually, to everybody. Still, none of us want for it to come too soon, do we? As in life, the actions you take matter. The choices you make will affect others. I'll be keeping a close eye on your progress. It's not my place to interfere, but I might be persuaded to offer the occasional hint. Here's one for free. There are pictures in this world that can show you some possible futures. If you can find them and study them, they may just help you to make better decisions. Or should I say, decisions that result in the outcomes you would prefer. That's all for the moment. We'll talk again soon enough. We'll have the opportunity to account for all the actions that you've taken, or whatever mess you've made. We got enough? If we run out, we can always call for backup. So, uh, look. I've never been down there before. Down? The water. Diving. Or maybe you could show me how the pros do it. Are you serious? Uh, yeah. I mean, are you serious you came out here without taking any lessons? Uh, kind of, yeah. I wanted to. I just didn't, I didn't have time, you know? I had to work all summer. Oh, uh, fair enough, fair enough. Whoa, careful. That dive cam is, like, super expensive. Look, bro, be cool. What? Julia and Conrad are, you know, how do I say it? Super fucking loaded? So? So don't sweat the little stuff, man. It's not cool. Don't make me regret letting you tag along. Dude, you know I'm not, like, the best around new people. Or whatever. Just shut up. Brad, you're not on this trip because you're my bro. I mean... You are my brother, but, I mean, like, we're buddies, you know? Um, kinda. We're just out here to fucking hang, cool out, and kick. What the fuck are you talking about? Let's just kick it and be legends, man. Mm -hmm. All right, amigo. Calvary's almost here. Ooh. Sorry I'm a little snappy. I'm just... We knew medical school would be stressful, you know? Total shocker. And man, the long distance thing with Julia, it's been rough. Yeah, I got you. Must be tough. No worries, man. Huh? <laughs> yep. Right on cue. What? Conrad doesn't think we have enough beer. Ah. I guess I keep these in an undisclosed location. Yeah. Hey! So, uh... Can I get your imp Yeah, what? Just, uh... Kind of a big thing I'm trying to make a decision about. About finishing med school? No, but... It's just kind of a big life choice, you know? How to know what's the right thing to do. Go with your gut. If it's right, you'll know. Hey!
Mm. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Connie, this is... A hey, what's up, man? Conrad. <laughs> Watch it, sis. Lady killer, right here. <laughs> Good to finally meet you, Conrad. This is Brad, by the way, my little bro. Hey. Bradley! I feel like I already know you. I've heard so much about you. Yeah, uh, likewise. Miss hey, man. Wanna crack Every a Every second. Huh. Uh, that's a lot of seconds, cowboy. Ah, uh, TBH? I kinda have a thing with, uh, seasickness? Brad. Bradley. Ray Brattleberry. There's only one way to get your sea legs, and it comes in a can. Uh, fine. One. That's all. <laughs> right on, Bradical. I like the cut of your ship. Uh, it's jib. Don't ruin it. You ever do any diving before? Um, no, actually. Never done it before. Water virgin. Nice. Hey, we're gonna pop your cherry together. Gonna be gentle. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Where's the old crust bucket skipper anyhow? I'd invite you to make yourselves at home, but uh... so is everybody on board and ready to go? Selling, I'm buying. <coughs> That's it, get it all up. Uh, yeah. You uh wanna go lie down? Yeah. You know, maybe I should. Yeah. Oh boy. What about over here? That's pretty far out of the way. I'm just thinking about backup targets in case we don't find anything on the dive cam. Listen, to be honest, I've never heard of this wreck you're looking for. Usually these things are crawling with divers. Yeah. This one's different. I'm just saying, if it gets too late, I know some nice places where you can just take, you know, a nice dive. Brad did his homework. If he says the wreck's here, it's here. <sighs> OK, look, you're the client. I'm just saying, we don't have unlimited daylight. I'm gonna go help Conrad and Julia with the camera. What you got? Feast your eyes on this. Brad's calculations were right on the money. Always bet on Brad. Uh, kid's a whiz. We should thank him. Bliss, we found a place. Yeah? Yeah, it looks like World War II. We are ready to dive. Uh. Technically, we should call this in to port authorities as an unreported wreck. Well, technically. Are you sure you don't want to do this the right way? Wait, are you saying we shouldn't die? The right way. Come on, what is this, kindergarten? I had to bring it up. If we just go down and take a look, who's going to know? Fine, as long as you're quick. And don't touch anything. I just can't wait to be the first one down there. Can you imagine? Untouched? We should be ready to get you guys in the water and... I'll set up the tanks. The boys will do the final checks. Take a look at the camera. See if you can find any... right out. Hey, maybe you should check on your bro. Hey, hey. Hi, sweetie. Hi. You know, we have rules out here for a reason. You guys gotta respect that. Uh, yeah, sorry about before. Everybody's just a little... We've been planning this whole thing for a while now. I get it. But there are rules and laws and customs. These rules are all pretty basic stuff. How much experience do you have with these kind of dives? Dived a couple wrecks over the years. Not an expert, but... You know, experienced. If this is your first unreported wreck, then you should know there's a very specific protocol you have to follow. For all you know, this could be a war grave. Disturbing it would be illegal and immoral. 
Come on. You see anyone else out here? Who's gonna know? We logged our route at the harbor. If someone sees it's been disturbed, it ain't gonna be hard to put two and two together. Especially if some little souvenirs show up online. <laughs> you know what? I can't stop you. Just respect the rules down there. Don't do anything stupid that'll get my ass in trouble. What's up? How you doing? Sorry, that brewski got the better of me. Hey, all part of the adventure. Sorry for putting a damper on things. No worries, dude. Take more than that just to screw up the trip. Let's get some rest. Come back when you're feeling better. Huh. What am I looking at here? You know how to use that? Uh, no, not really. You might want to just let it do its thing. Almost got the gear good to go. Need an extra hand? Never used a rebreather before. I think we're in good shape. It's probably not a bad idea for you to have a clue how these things work. Gotta say, not too happy with our captain at the moment. Yeah, I know. Let's just play cool for. Cool? Why? There's no point in antagonizing her. If she tries to keep me from doing this dive one more time, that's it. Gloves off. That's fair. Just don't force her. All right. I'm going to get these rebreathers set up, and then we'll go through the final steps together. Cool. Just holler at us when you're ready. There's a little gap in the tail. Take a look. Tanks are red. Tanks a lot. Zing. OK, so this is the rebreather. Way cooler than a regular scuba setup. It takes all that CO2 that you'd normally just exhale into the water, and instead, it gets totally reused. Then it reduces decompression time on your way up. State of the art. OK, O2 checked. Whoa, whoa, eager beaver. You got to check your O2 first. Looking good, Jay. I'd like to take you underwater. Hey, that's my sis you're talking about. You know it. OK, you little clown fishes. I'm going to go see what Fliss is up to. You behave, Connie. Looking for a first mate, Captain. Need look no first. You're on camera. I'll take the wheel. Let's get a before photo. I know the weight is interminable, but soon, soon it was me. All right, kids, good to go. Just remember I got the, bank the stick. rules, please. Oh, I heard that about you. Ha ha. You ever have to use one? On a shark? Nope. She acts like we're going to ransack the plane. Hey, a souvenir would be cool. It's not like one tiny little thing would hurt anybody. I won't tell if you won't. <laughs> not like we can scan the wreck every night at sundown. There. That shape. That's gotta be it. Whoa. That is, like, way bigger than I thought. Damn. It's pretty intact, too. This is a fucking remarkable find. Let's swim around a little and find a way in. Howdy, Captain. You fancy a pint with your second in command? You are not my second in command. Third in command. No. Fresh and eager cabin boy. Still a no. Your well-paying, dashingly handsome, seafaring client is requesting the pleasure of your company over a frosty amber liquid. Sure. Why not? Pretty nice ride you got. Where'd you get the cash? It's a long story. It's complicated and it's really difficult to explain. Well, I'm a complicated guy. 
Try me. Well, it involves at least several trips to the bank and signing of big stacks of paper with large numbers on them. So you took out a loan. You know, you're smarter than you look. If you're interested, maybe my family can make an investment in your business. That's very kind of you to offer. I suppose we could have that conversation. Uh, you know what? I better spend some time keeping the Duke of Milan ship shape. Aye, aye. Weather looks clear. Mm. I'll have to keep an eye on those clouds. Uh-oh. It's getting mighty crowded out here. How's it going? Knocked out by cold frosty. Man, I feel like such a wimp. Hey, it's your vacation. You're allowed to overdo it. I am officially starting a temperance club. Party of one. Lifetime membership. Hope the lovebirds are having the time of their lives down there. I hope they know what they're doing down there. Attitude matters 20 meters down. Alex plays the goof, but he was pretty serious about acing his diving certification. What other dives have they done? When I got the booking, I thought they were newbies. Alex and Julia have both logged plenty of dives. I'm the real amateur, but I'm ready. Huh. Gotta get back up top. Check your Why do I keep these around? Twenty miles north of the coast, over. Reading you. How can we help? Over. Inquiring about guidelines regarding an unidentified sunken wreck in this vicinity, over. Any tampering with a wreck, identified or not, will result in prison or a fine or both. Over. Roger that. Thank you. Over. Duke of Milan. Duke of Milan, are you reporting a finding? What is the nature of this call? Over. We'll have a full report when we return to shore. Over. Reminding you that you are not to enter any wreck without an official dive dossier from the Offshore Relics Registry. Over. Hey there. How's it hanging? You look like you're taking full advantage of your relaxation time. I'm a man of many talents. Too bad charm is not among them. Ah, but my charm is like a boomerang. You think it's gone right over your head until smack. You're out cold. That makes no sense. You need to mind the speed limit, Buster. Hey, I like life in the slow lane, too. Nice and slow. I'll see you later, Conrad. I hope so. Well, hello there, Captain. Can I do something for you? I can think of a few things. Oh, do tell. Mm, maybe later if you stay on my good side. Duke to Alex. Duke to Julie. We have unexpected guests. Stay quiet. I'll do the talking. Uh, what do you think they want? Maybe they're fishermen. I mean, maybe that's their boot. I don't know. Just be on guard. What's that about? That is not the Coast Guard, so we're not under arrest.
Guys, you gotta keep back. We've got divers in the water. Hey, we got damage here. You see this? Look at our boat. We can take care of this, man. It's not a problem. What do you think? Like, uh, 10 bucks cover it? Oh, whoops, my bad. Let's make it 20. Well, shoot, you, you think it's more like 30? I can do 30. All right, you guys drive a hard bargain, but I'm with you. Here, let's just throw in the whole pot. said one of the pictures showed an open. Conrad, really? Really? On the rear turret. Huh. Good on ya, Connie. The turret. We can get in through there. Oh, careful. Could be dangerous. Uh, ladies first? Can I just take a second to say, holy shit, Alex, we did it. I mean, <laughs> let's not waste any time not exploring. Go, go, go! Julia, leave it. You'd have to take your gear off to get it. That pipe's pretty tight. What if you get stuck without your rebreather? Don't be such a gonad. I'll be fine. Gonad? Seriously? Am I dead? What's happening? Live a little, Edgelord. Stupid down here? That's it. One chance. You get that? Chill out. I'm fine, see? No problemo. This says it was a rescue plane. Launched from a U.S. base. They were on their way to help out a ship. down the fuselage. Brad's gonna flip when he sees this. Check it out. They reconfigured the bomb. One of the rescue boats is missing. Think they were using it? Let's see what else we can find. Good God. something. Wow. What the hell happened here? In the look of things, they knew they were goners. Uh, you hear that? Let's check it out. Co-pilot. Gotta be. Plane crash not high on my list of ways to perish. Easy now. This stuff's been down here a long yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Julia! Oh my god! Just don't touch anything else, please! <sighs> He's holding something. We gotta get out of here! Yeah! It's a gray reef shark. Not interested in us. Let's go. Hold on. Uh, oh, okay. Thought this was the right time, but then didn't know if it was the right time. But I guess no time's the right time. I, I, I don't... I guess. Oh. I know you can't tell because we're underwater, but I'm on my knees right now. Uh-huh. Julia, will you marry me? I, I... Oh, crap. I, Alex, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I, I, I just... I mean, we almost just died. Julia, I'm serious. Alex, wow. What a goddamn story. How's it end? Yes! Yes! I'll marry the shit out of you! <laughs> All right, handsome hero. You want to get on with our escape from the, uh, crumbling? Fliss, this is Julia. We're coming back. Hey, where'd that other boat come from? Wait, Julia. We gotta decompress. Whoa! Damn! What the fuck? We gotta get up there. Wait, we have to decompress. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My brother's up there. Julia! This is crazy. You just gotta wait a few seconds. Ugh. Ugh. Oh my god, this is taking too long. This is torture. Just a few more seconds. Okay, now. Go, go! Hey, what the hell is going- What the hell happened? It's cool, man. Everything's all right now. Oh, nothing. Your brother just took it upon himself to blow up my grill. Conrad, what is wrong with you? What was up with that other boat? These fishing guys came by and ran into the dive line. Whatever. Who cares, right? What I want to know is, what'd you guys find? Well, we found the plane, and it is huge, full of cool stuff. Oh my god, you guys, can you all just shut up for like one second? <laughs> Holy shit! Dude, bro, nicely congrats. done. Come up and let's celebrate. You're getting to know these intrepid adventurers then. Alex and his little brother Brad, trying to swim with the big fish. Both seem out of their depth. And Julia, the love of Alex's life. And he, the love of hers. What about Conrad, a bold fellow, you might say? Or maybe you'd say arrogant. And then there's Captain Fliss, strong, forthright, stubborn. Do I detect a spark between her and Conrad? Let me reassure you, you help them to make some decisions they'll value later on. You're doing well. So, we're like 10 seconds out of the jaws of certain... Well, certain, I mean, that's relevant. And this meatball... Meatball? This meatball pulls a ring out of God knows where. Yeah, where did you hide the ring? A lady never tells. Oh, well, needless to say, this lady was impressed. <laughs> well played there, man, no? Wasn't Comrade gonna get us some more beers after he helped Fliss? Maybe he decided, hey, I'll drink some, and then he got drunk. And since he was drunk, he forgot to bring it to us. And he just kept on drinking, and he drank all of it. Uh, sounds like you've had some experience with this kind of phenomenon. Yeah, I've been studying it I'll for go years. look for him. Oh, we found a bullet lodged in the plane. Huh. I left it below deck if you want to check it out. So, how does it feel to soon be known as the Mr. Julius? Honestly, I wasn't sure how it would feel, but now that I hear it, it does have a nice ring. So, I guess we should talk about wedding plans. Eventually.
Now you're speaking my language. And taking lessons. Yeah, I can't wait for us to plan everything together. I was so worried you might say no. Of course I was gonna say yes, you dimwit. I'm happy you did. The second you said yes, I could see our whole future rolling out ahead of us. I love you, Al. Where did everyone go? There was much celebration to be had. I'll go find them. You just relax. Hey, you seen my brother? Or Fliss? Uh, no, I uh, got distracted. Let's go get him. Sure. Sorry to interrupt your seven seconds in heaven. Oh, yeah, the beers. I was just getting them now. All right, now that everybody's here, let's take a look at the navigator's pad we found. Maybe we can figure out why the plane was... Where'd you put it? It's in your case. Okay, I'll go get it. Hey. Feel to be a man we're leaving, honestly. Been carrying that around for a while. Why'd you do it on the dime? I wanted it to be memorable. It's not that memorable. I have to hand it to you. Popping the question on the bottom of the ocean like that is pretty romantic. Never thought you were the settling type. Probably. I couldn't have done it without such a good bro, bro. Bro. Wait, what do you mean? You told me to follow my heart. Uh, one, I'm not that sappy. And two, I was talking about med school. Still, we're over the top, bro. So, we're going again tomorrow? Yeah, it seemed a little too dangerous for my blood. Let's go it. Well, I'm with you and we'll be fine. Hey, almost time for barbecuing. Got the pad yet? Oh, no, not yet. I got distracted. Got it. Uh... Come here, you vixen. Easy, tiger. We should get back. Right here. <laughs> You'll get no resistance there. All right, everyone, check it out. Manchurian gold. Who wants to find some sunken treasure? So what do you think, Captain? Coordinates? Those are coordinates, all right. Maybe the plane's destination? You think we could get there by tomorrow? It takes a couple hours if the weather stays steady. Wow. You find anything else? There was a flight plan on board that seemed to indicate it was a rescue plane. Yeah, that makes sense. After the war, they turned long-range bombers into rescue planes. And then this plane must have been shot down because it was riddled with bullet holes. I found one lodged in the fuselage. Huh. And it was full of life rafts. Must have gotten shot down before they could deliver all the rafts. There was only one missing. Reckless. All of you. Excuse me? I told you to leave everything down there alone. Oh, come on. We've been through this already. I'm not talking about the law. No, hey, they were respectful. No, you did whatever you wanted. Whatever you took, it was too much. You're right. We should have been more careful. That's not me, I'm sorry. Okay, maybe. I don't know you. You should have never gone down to that plane in the first place. It's bad luck. You think you can scavenge down there and it makes no difference, but every single thing you bring back has an essence. It's like a ghost you invite to the surface. Here we go. Huh. I never thought about it like that. You never think about much of anything. Well, maybe I never heard about such cool ghost stories. They're not cool ghost stories. Not like for fun. People drown in these waters and you have to respect their resting place. Damn straight. Brad, you got a fun ghost? Yeah, I heard a story. It happened right around here, too. Let's hear it. We could all use a good show. Let's hear it. I bet you can spin a good yarn. It's kind of messed up, actually. Scare away, little bro. Okay, here goes. 
This story is true. It had happened right near here, in an old lighthouse. Classic setup. Wait, true story? Where'd you hear this? If you need to know, it's ripped right from the rotting pages of the terrifying ancient in-flight magazine I was perusing on our way here. The lighthouse stood atop an atoll, isolated from the rest of the world, a lone beacon in the night, a sailor's respite. The lighthouse keeper with the waves pounding the rocky shore. One misty morning, he comes upon a woman covered in blood. She's stumbling down the beach. He hurries to her aid and she falls into his arms, sobbing. As he hurries her back to the lighthouse, he asks where she's from. He doesn't waste any time. Smooth. He of the one-track mind. The woman answers, I live here in the lighthouse. My parents are upstairs right now. Twist. Of course, the lighthouse keeper says, that isn't so. Of course, he's lived there alone for years. And the woman becomes hysterical and his sister parents are upstairs. So they go to the top of the lighthouse and there, splayed out on the floor, is a man and a woman brutally murdered with an ax. Always an ax. I mean, do people even use axes anymore? Okay, fine, then it was a meat hook. They were slashed with a meat hook and hung from the rafters. Wait a minute, are you changing the murder weapon? I thought this was a true story. There's a lot of blood, a lot of carnage. Who's to say how it was done? Okay, so who did it? So the woman, uh, she's still hysterical, says her husband did it. And he's still here, in the closet. Ha, huh, the husband, eh? <laughs> so is this a warning to all future brides? Hey, no backseats. You're locked in. So the lighthouse keeper creeps over to the closet, opens the door, and sure enough, there's a man inside. But he sliced out his own insides with a meat hook, horrified. He looks closer to see the dead man's face in the dark. Closer, closer. And he sees it's his own face. And then its eyes bulge out and screams. <laughs> yeah, so ah, gross. Hey, well, super twist. Nice. <laughs> nice one, Squire. You have me going. Pretty cool. Heavy on the cheese there, corn dog. Okay, you've all had your fun. We should all turn in. There's some weather hitting our way. Uh-uh. No, no, no. No, because according to standard vessel regulation, we're all required. One more beer before hitting the hay. What regulations are these? Uh, it's standard issue regulatory institutional protocol subdivision 1099. Uh-huh. <laughs> Where'd you read that? The internet. Oh, so you found a website that tells you to drink beer under every circumstance. I'm just following orders, ma'am. <laughs> I'm into this website. 10-4, <laughs> good buddy. And I'm out.
almost free. Hey, so, uh, good news, Ben. Bad news? I don't see how this could get any worse. The bad news is these are kind of... Maybe the fishermen I pissed off earlier. Oh, God damn it, Conrad. Great, just great. And the good news? Uh, I recognize them. How is that good news? I thought you were gonna ask the good news first. You're such an idiot, Jesus. Hey. Alex, what are they gonna do to us? Don't worry. If they were gonna kill us, they would've done it already. I'm not just worried about being killed. <sighs> You're gonna regret this, you piece of shit. You're gonna rot in a cell. <sighs> Nobody knows you're out here, little lady. You're all alone with us now. Let's make the most you of it. You can go fuck yourself, you piece of shit. You're the little lady. Treat a lady right. Stop! Please, just stop. Slow down. Easy. We finish with him later. Shut the fuck up. I don't think they're gonna hit her. They haven't hit Fliss. Fliss sure seems to be getting buddy buddy. Did you see my brother? Yeah. He's hiding. He's okay. All right. Turn around. Don't let them see your hands. Once we get Julia back. Maybe we could take them by surprise. Okay, they're coming. See what they want to do with us. Eight seconds. The storms ain't out. They came here on a boat. Maybe we can take it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a speedboat. The main guy. Yeah. He's got a gun. Well. 
At least one of us can get on their boat. Get some help. These fuckers need to pay. We gotta take them down. They can try to fight back, but if we had the gun, they'd be forced to surrender. Seven seconds. I can get out through the window. We gotta break these off first. Too loud. They'll hear it. But we're gonna break them during the thunder. <sighs> Good call. I climb out the window, climb around the side, and hit them from there. We'll take them from the other side. Don't leave us here, okay? Okay, let's do it. What you doing, boy? Boat! Just get to the boat! This kid's trying to kill me, old son. Je te mets mon poing dans la gueule. Olsen, come here. Which one of you is going to tell me about this Manchurian goo? Just talking. You wanna talk? Keep the volume down. I'm just gonna say it. Fliss has gotta be in on this. She and these guys, they travel in the same waters. She's the captain and they barely laid a hand on her? I bet you told them about the Manchurian gold. They're in cahoots. Are you out of your mind? How did you come up with this bullshit? How fucking dare you, you overprivileged asshole? You're all in this together. This is a trap, and you set us up. asshole! Put a cork in it. <sighs> Sit still, all of you. You, come with me. Hey, leave her alone. Find out how long the storm is gonna last. Do you try anything? Anything fishy? And there'll be consequences. Get it? Duke of Milan requesting weather update. Oh. Dude, we read you. Everything okay? Over. Hey, uh, just requesting any information about this storm you can give us? It's a little bit hairy out here. Over. Be 
big storm coming in from the east. Gonna hit you pretty hard, but should pass through your coordinates within an hour. You sound a little stressed, Duke. Please let me know if you need assistance. Not used to a little weather freaking you out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. A-OK -okay out here. We can handle a couple of puffs and drops of rain. Uh, thanks for the info. We'll see you for drinks back on shore in a couple of days. there than with these psychos. Oh yeah, great. He could get killed down there. Brad's a big boy. He'll be okay. And it's probably better for us if he stays put for now. Kind-hearted creature I am, I'd like to offer you some forewarning of what's to come. Tempted? You're going it alone. Independent. Admirable. Possibly foolish. We'll learn soon enough. Anyway, now that you've reached a point of significant distress, I presume you're eager to get back to your story, but here's a thing. Everything may not be entirely as it seems. <sighs> Probably shouldn't have said that. La porte! La porte! Vive! Retire la tête à l'image. Oh, 
whole place is a floating gun. Sign up for a Something about this place is making my hair stick up so far it's gonna jump up. What the hell do these dickheads want? Ah, oh, man! What was that? Oh, shit! Okay, all of you, into the room. Hey, it's pitch black in here. Give us the light. this fucking place. Given our observations that this is some sort of ship and seems to be abandoned, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's some sort of abandoned ship. You think this ship is the Manchurian gold? We are in the vicinity of those coordinates. We can't just sit around. We need a plan. We're not exactly in the best position to be making any moves. The second they let their guard down, we gotta take advantage of it and get off the ship. Yeah, man. This whole rust bucket's one tetanus shot from the bottom of the ocean. We already tried to escape. Didn't exactly work out. We gotta get back to the boat and find Brad. They swiped our distributor cap. Gonna be difficult to get anywhere without it. So, okay, what exactly is a distributor cap? Now pretend you're talking to someone who doesn't know anything about boats. It makes the engine work. I don't, I don't know. It, the Duke of Milan is dead in the water without it. While those guys are out panning for Manchurian gold or whatever they think they're gonna find on this floating coffin, we gotta take advantage and look around for a way out of here. Fliss, I just wanted to say that um, I might have gotten things kind of wrong back there. Uh, excuse me? I may have kind of prematurely come to the conclusion that maybe you know, you're working some kind of side deal with these guys, or whatever. But I, I mean, obviously that's not true. They're being just as bad to you as they are to us, so, yeah. Allow me to translate. He's saying that he's sorry. Well, I... Hmm, well, your apology is kinda accepted. Cool. Cool. Olson, 
on devait seulement les voler. Et là, on se retrouve coincé sur ce ratio de merde qui pue la mort. Et on a des prisonniers Ça va trop loin, tout ça. Vos gueules Fermez-la, tous les deux. Je suis votre capitaine, et je vous ordonne d'obéir à mes ordres. So, when we told you this would be a quick little adventure... Was there something in this small print? Should we expect an itemized bill for all these... I wonder why this was ripped off. Extras. Yeah. Kidnapping, 750 a.m. Extra time, 350 an hour. Listening to your stupid bickering? I'll get back to you on that one. At least you're not charging us for the damage. Great. Of all the places... I am now. What do you think this ship was? Alex, I'm real. What's going on? Just enjoying the perks of our all inclusive cruise. I found a letter, by the way. Some guy was writing to his little lady back home about all the ghosts and crap on the ship. Ghosts? Uh, yeah. I mean, there aren't really ghosts here. Right? Let's hope we don't run across any ghosts. We got our hands full already. Okay. We got one guy complaining about another guy pretending to be sick so he could get out of guarding one of the holds. And I guess he was kind of a repeat offender. It sounds like nobody liked it very much down there. So, uh, I guess the moral of the story is stay the fuck away from the haunted cargo holds. Haunted. Maybe they just didn't like working there. Yeah, or maybe there are super ghosts. That's... what? Ghosts, but like 16-bit. Yeah, I don't know what you're saying. Super ghosts. Right. We just need to stay calm and focus on getting out of here. I just wish I knew what the fishermen were planning. Look, those meatballs are probably just looking for some get-rich-quick Manchurian gold. Which may not even exist. I mean, what if they don't find anything? Then we're fucked. So, what do we do? We want an adventure, right? So let's adventure the shit out of this popsicle stand. <laughs> you gonna man up and be a hero? I'll be whatever you want. Duly noted. Okay, well we're not gonna do anything from in here. We need to keep looking around and try to find a way out. All right, yeah, catch you later. Get it open. Hey, come here. Maybe we can bend it open and get out of here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't know where a vet like this would go. I think we just gotta find out. You want me to just smash through this wall? Oh, yeah, sure. Big man on campus. Someone should create a distraction. This is gonna be loud. Yeah, okay. Conrad, you do it. Hey! Yeah, you, Long John Silver and shit, uh, what are you guys doing out there? Pieces of eight and shiver me timbers, you one-legged fuck faces! Yeah, no, you, I'm gonna rip your pirate parents off your shoulders and stomp them into rainbow-colored stew! Hey, hey. 
I'm warning you. I am an American citizen. You really want my president coming after you guys? Because he will. Each and every one of you, personally. Hey, can you hear me? I I'm talking to you. Hello? Hurry up. Safe now? Stay quiet. We need to keep going. Look at that. I love with the dumb place. Come on. There's gotta be some stairs around here. There's the mystery of the smelly socks punching briefs. <laughs> I just want to know where the hell they are. There should have been dozens of people on board. Hundred. How could they all just vanish and leave all of their stuff behind? Something doesn't add up. Where's the you are here? What the hell happened to Brad? You think he's still on the Duke? You guess this is as good as mine. You hear that? If by that you mean that terrifying sound, then no, I didn't hear anything. This place is fucking massive. I'm gonna go get it. Now. 
Now's our chance. Grab it. You gonna watch my back? What do you think I've been doing? Damn it, they're taking place. Shut the fuck up, man. Where are the others? Arrête de crier, j'essaie d'entendre ce qui se passe. Je crie pas. Ta gueule. Je veux savoir où sont les autres. We're gonna follow them. Don't let them out of your sight. What are we doing? I thought we were following them. We gotta keep our distance. This way we can get ahead of them. Let's hope it's faster. I got this. Why do I need to... What was that? You heard that? Maybe we can hide. Not funny. Wait a minute. We've... Uh... I don't think so. Oh, I swear we've been here before, Alex. Have you been leading us in circles? Come on, guys. We gotta keep moving. Hey, easy with that. We shouldn't be screwing around right now. Nice blade. Could make a nice severance package for my assailants if you catch my drift. I guess you never know. We might have to use it. According to this, today is beef casserole. Mm, yummy. It's as if everything just ground to a halt on this one day. The whole ship just stopped functioning. Jesus! God! Alex? What is it? yourself. Ugh. Soup du jour, mademoiselle? As if you know your way around the kitchen. Hey, babe. Once we settle down, I will be your personal chef de cuisine. I'm thinking we gotta go through. What was that? Uh, maybe you should get your ears. Did, didn't you? 
I mean, did you hear anything? All right, well, we should keep moving. I know I saw something. It was moving in the shadows. Julia, just try to get a grip. Don't fucking laugh at me. I'm sure of it. We're... Well, what do you want to do? Turn. We've seen all this before. Cool it, Jay. We don't have a lot of options. It's got to be this way. Okay, no. This isn't working for me. What? Gross caskets and crappy chapels. Not my scene, you know? You're right. It's gross and it's crappy. We gotta get out of here too sweet. And we gotta find Fliss. Okay, so can we just get the fuck out then? What is this? We got a name? What are they even doing? I don't think stuck on a ghost ship for all eternity sounds like a good plan, eh? Who cares where they're from or where they're going? They're dead and we're not, so let's keep it that way. Human? What is the deal with this place? That is some bad mojo, dude. Okay, leave. Now! Leave, leave, leave! Look at this one. Like for a kid or something. I don't want to know. Let's get out of here. Yes! Maybe that's little baby Dracula. Right there, and those are his parents, and they're lying in the dirt from their native country. And, and then they all jump on Conrad and eat off his face. <laughs> the end. Got some serious locks in these caskets. Why would they be chained and locked? Well, that's one way to end a relationship. Any medicine we find in here is gonna be old. Way Why out. do you want medicine suddenly? I'm just trying to be helpful. Right, okay. Yeah. Still might have some kick. Four years of med school and you prescribed me an 80-year-old aspirin and I call me in the morning. That's not gonna make him sick, is it? No time to be fucking around. I'm serious. I can't take it. Oh, what the fuck? Don't touch it. Why did you touch it? Where the hell is Conrad? Conrad? Maybe just get into. Looks like he died of fright. You can't. Okay, so 
This guy had appendicitis, which is pretty routine, and then, then he died of a massive heart attack, which is not routine at all. Hashtag nope, nope. Connie? Connie! Connie, where the fuck are you? Where? You must have gone on ahead. Connie? Hey, Conrad! Where the hell did he go? tells you, don't you? Stop. This is cursed. Still right here with us. I mean, you die on a ship, your ghost stays on the ship. Come on. You have no idea what you're talking about. Huh. Where did all your friends go? I don't know what the fuck this is all about, but we gotta keep moving and find Olsen. Now! Olsen? Merde. Qu'est-ce que... Comment ça C'est quoi ce bordel Hello? 
room? Is anyone there? <sighs> that can't be a good sign.
Fuck up, B-Boy. Alex? Julia? Skeletons. Skeletons. Skeletons? Where's the skin, guys? Where'd all the skin go? You're not supposed to be out here. I'm not supposed to see this.
God's name is... This place is... What is going on? Brad. <laughs> ah! Hey, Brad. What are you... Hey, what's wrong? What are you doing? <laughs> stop it! <laughs> Brad, stop! <laughs>
Drowned. We gotta get away. He's still around. That that guy. Fuck. me with the whole pirate adventure thing and I gotta say it was a good idea. No, it was. I mean, it's funny. I think it's funny, but I think the guys you hired are taking it a little too far, maybe. And don't be cheap. I mean, you didn't feel like paying top dollar. But you get, you get these guys that are not cream of the crop. They're taking it a little too far. You know, you get my drift? So if you want to feel free to pull the old plug, get rid of these guys, I'm with you. I mean, these guys are fucking crazy. They're chasing us around the ship. <sighs> Probably not much of a practice what you preach kind of guy. If anybody knew what the hell was going on in this place, it would have been the captain.
Yeah, I should really take a look behind this door, shouldn't I? Should. But should I? Yeah, I should. <clears throat> well, all right. So how do I pry the son of a bitch off? Got some half at least. Enough from door. Get the hell out of me. Come on, we should keep moving. We need to find the others. Oh, fuck. What's the matter? 
between both. Don't shut up to me anymore. Sis, what's up? Out of the way! Come on, we gotta get somewhere safe. Hello. Things appear to have taken a turn towards the spiritual, wouldn't you say? Have you figured out what's going on? How to stop it? How to save the lives of your poor, unfortunate stowaways? You will, I hope. Although it seems the ship's previous occupants never managed to. Quite a lot of deaths that night. Let me help you out, give you a little hint. No hint? Perhaps you think you can piece things together from the clues you found yourself. Good luck with that. Perhaps you've started to realize something. That everything and everyone may not be quite what they appear to be. I hope that helped. Well, aren't you excited to find out what your poor unfortunates are making of all this and how you might avoid any more unnecessary tragedy? Go on, back to it. Speak soon. What's wrong with you, back? Brad, you lost your shit, like, big time. You almost killed me. What? What are you talking... Come on, no, no, come on, that's ridiculous. Well, what the fuck is going on with this ship? Because I gotta be honest, it feels like there's some like, like evil, like literal evil going on down. Let's just stay calm and relatively sane about this, okay? The stuff I saw, it's like there were these old soldiers, they were bodies, they were dead, but then they came alive. That doesn't sound that crazy right about now. I saw something. This, uh, uh, this old lady. I mean, she was batshit crazy, like dinosaur old. Not that that's a bad thing, but she just, like, up and vanished on me. Alex wasn't the only Alex. What are you talking about? There were things walking around with his face on them. Alex's face, it, it was horrifying. Julia, I'd never hurt you. You know that, right? No, I know, it's just... Let's time out, okay? This place is too fucked up to just be fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, something is going on here. So what do we know for sure that we can all agree on? <laughs> Am I crazy or are we on a ghost ship? Like, ghost ships are real and this is one and we're totally on it and no, holy shit, we're so totally fucked? I was gonna say the same thing. 
Well, I know we're not the first people to see weird shit here. Apparently the guards were super freaked out by something they saw in the cargo holds. We found a note that said a bunch of guys tried to get out of guard duty because they were really freaked out by something. What do you think actually happened to this place? The goddamn mystery box is what it is. Looked like the newspaper was from 1947. This whole place reeks of weird. Dirty, stinky, weird. And I don't like it. It's like this place is stuck in a perpetual bad feeling machine. What happened to everybody on this ship? Where did they all go? I can't shake the feeling we're in one big floating coffin. So what's with the bodies? They come with the ship? They actually look like they've been scared to death. We know more than we did before. That's something at least. We're wasting time. Whatever we do, we have to do it now. Time to get off this ship. We're not going anywhere without the distributor cap. The Duke needs it to run. Hold on. The ship's gotta have a radio. If we can find it and use it... That's great, but do you think it still works? Just need to find a way up there. We gotta get up. <laughs> no shit. I think we're, uh, speaking clinically, totally effed. I know it sounds crazy. Maybe it was these guns that took down the plane from our dive. these if they weren't Swiss cheesed. Sadly, no, but I'll keep my eyes open. over here. I think this is our way up. Give me a lift. Mm. I'll pull you up. Chase Conrad before. Huh. I, I thought it looked familiar. Over here. Got a way through here. Something's wrong here. If you were headed to San Francisco, you'd be crazy to take this route. It's almost like they didn't want anyone to know they were coming. Like hide and seek out in the ocean? Uh, 
ship was blown off course, cloud cover was bad. They couldn't establish a position. Yeah, that looks like this poor sucker bit it right in the middle of his message. Hmm, sounds pretty desperate. Take a look. No freaking way. This thing actually still works? Look, radio science hasn't changed much in 70 years. As long as there's power. I'll give it a whirl. Ah, it's working. Military bandwidth. Let's ask them for help. Hey, hey, is anyone out there hearing this? Hello? Over. Holy shit, we got him. Uh, if you can hear us, we're on a ship, an old freighter. Our coordinates are approximately uh, 12 degrees, 30 minutes south. 151 degrees, 20 minutes west. Please, get here now. We need help. Please repeat. Please repeat. Over. We're on a freighter, abandoned, huge and old. Hello? Hello? Is anyone out there? Please, come in. Yo, guys, check it out. This has got to lead some... Maybe we can find a way to get the power back. We need to get that radio working. I think someone should wait here in case a message comes through. I gotta be honest. I don't think I'm gonna make it down there in my shape. I'll go, obviously. I can do this. I should be the one to go. Hey, little bro. What's up? I'm thinking you might deserve a promotion. How's medium bro sound? <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? You stepped up to the plate. Put yourself right in the line of fire. You're kind of mixing metaphors there. Not if the pitcher's a machine gun. <laughs> I'm impressed. Seriously. So what do you think? Hey. You sure you're up for it? I believe you got it, bro. I'm coming too. Hey, what? Julia, no. Uh, you're not always gonna be there to protect, big guy. I can handle this. Trust me. Whoa, whoa. If Julia says she can handle it, she can handle it. Case closed. Okay, Julia. It's you and I. <laughs> Broken bones? Every Everyone okay? What can I do? We're gonna have to find the generator. If we can get it started, we can power up the radio. Okay. We'll wait here by the radio. Here. Hey. After you? I'm guessing these are the lower levels of it. Some sort of altercation. Ten days in the brig. Wow. Must have really blown his lid to get that kind of time.
Huh. I guess there was a guy. I wish I could actually, you know. What the hell are you talking about? Well, in any other circumstance, you know, this place would be the coolest place to explore. Like, like ever. I'm gonna say no. Not at all. Says the girl who couldn't wait to dive a wreck. Shut up. Oh, Jesus. Here, come check this out. Look, down there. Looks like the engine. Good place to find the generator, right? Uh, I think I can just. Wait! Uh, Are you okay? Yeah, uh, all good. Just come down. That it, 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 it was. Wait, wait, did you see it? Um, hello. Okay, so I, so I'm seeing things, but you're not. Okay, so follow my thinking here. We know this ship is carrying Manchurian gold, which was actually some kind of dangerous chemical, right? And there's just like weird fog everywhere, all over the place. Maybe that's the Manchurian gold, and maybe it's fucking us all up, like in the head, you know? I mean. I definitely saw some crazy shit that I could have sworn was real, but maybe it wasn't. We know the crew were scared shitless of something. None of it happened. None of it was real. It was just a hallucination. This couldn't have anything to do with the plane wreck we dived. Okay, so the plane was a search and rescue. It came out here because the people on this ship sent a distress signal. We know that. But I guess at that point, the fog had done its damage. And for whatever reason, they shot the plane down. I mean, who knows what the hell they were thinking or thought they saw. Oh, God. All right, let's get going. Look, the ship was actually... I wonder why. You know what I miss for dry club. Yeah. Hey, hey, I found it. Oh, thank God. And it's working. Yeah, this is it, all right. Just throw the switch and let's get back upstairs. Okay. Let's get back upstairs. There's gotta be another way up. <laughs> We've lost power, but we have it back. Can you hear me? Over! Please state your situation, over. We need help, now! There are things on the ship that are trying to hurt us. Over! Recovery mission is on route to your location, over. Oh, come on, work, damn it! Look at that! The rebreather! The fisherman must have bothered over from the Duke of Milan. You think it still works? Looks like it's got a little juice left. Maybe a couple of minutes? Should we bring it with us? I mean, it's heavy. It's just gonna slow us down. <sighs> yeah, fuck it. Dead weight. Salut! Je sais que t'es fait frère! De quoi tu parles? Tu veux? Hein? Mais c'est moi qui vas tuer! 
Dis-moi seulement où est ce putain d'or J'ai perdu la tête ou quoi Non Je t'en prie Non Je t'ai dit de la fermer, sale menteur Ferme ta gueule de merde Tu dis n'importe quoi Tout ce que tu racontes, c'est des conneries Alors, ferme ta sale gueule de merde Écoute. Écoute-moi. Non. Fais pas ça. Ah Je t'avais dit de fermer ta gueule. Oh, fuck. Hiding, you little. What's the problem with sharing all that gold, eh? There must be plenty of that to go around, more than enough. And we're all in this together, right? Trying to cut me out of the deep. <laughs> you can't have all the gold, and I'm to be left here to die. <laughs> But I, <laughs> Captain. And I am the one that says who goes and who stays.
tell me we're safe. Oh. Yeah, totally. I mean, these doors were meant to withstand all sorts of... Stuff. Okay. Okay. None of you move. None of you go on changing on me now. Turn around. Slow. Real slow. Oh. Okay. All right. Not changing. None of that. Raise your hands up. Slow. No, no. Not like that. Just put the gun down. Nobody has to get hurt. You think I wanted to hurt anybody? I didn't get a choice in this. It's in you too, isn't it? Isn't it now? Ha! Ah, not again! It's all gone changing on me! What? What's changing? Stay away! Stay back from the mist! What? There's no mist, man! Don't breathe it! Don't breathe the mist! Why can't we breathe the mist? What does it do? It's... life. Bringing things to life that shouldn't be alive. It's inside now. Inside with us, now. Please, just calm down. Stop! Stop! It's in one of us, isn't it? Put the gun down, now! Why would you say that? Why are you telling me what to do? Yeah, you breathed in the mist. It's happening. I can feel it. Okay, all, all right, look. I, there was, you know, something back there. Uh, maybe a mist or a fog, maybe? I knew it. I told you. Did you breathe it in? No, look. We held our breath. We did not breathe any of that stuff. <laughs> oh, really? I know you're all fancy divers, but you expect me to buy that? We've been down here for hours. You've been holding your breath this whole time. You're holding your breath, what? Oh, good. It's in me. I got the mist in me, don't I? It's in me, isn't it? Uh, uh, I can feel it swirling around in there. It's changing me! On the inside. No, no! I, 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 I can't see it! You're all right, man. There's no mist. Stop! Stop lying! You can all see it in me, can't you? You're all just lying! And the mist is inside! Hey, man, come on, just put the... Oh, fucking shit. Wait by the radio. Why? I'm gonna check the next level. There might be some more gear down there we can use. Uh... I'm not going far. Just wait by the radio. I'm gonna hang back here as well. By the radio. We need someone to keep listening. I, I can. I saw the the, the, the big guy. He had the. <laughs> we gotta go after him.
Laisse-moi ce bien mot. Oh non, what's that? Doesn't matter. We need that distributor cap. Here! He had to have come this way. Holy crap! Good job, Alex. I'll have to find another way around. Get lucky. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Fliss. Gotcha.
All right. Let's try it. that took her boat. I thought there was gold. She wanted the gold. That's all this was about. Venturian gold. Well, that turned out to be quite a bit different than we expected. You know, I just keep going over it and over it. And it doesn't make any sense, you know? Just... And I know what I saw. I just... don't believe in... whatever it was that I saw. I saw Alex. It wasn't Alex, it was someone else. But they looked just like Alex, and he was sneering at me. Fucking rich kids. So, um, does anybody else feel like knocking back Frosty? This guy? Yeah. So, um, I found this. Congratulations. All your charges are still breathing, and that's something, I suppose. Things became a little intense, but Alex kept his nerve. Well done, Alex. Well done, you. It's all about decisions, isn't it? Decisions made in a hurry, in a panic, made with the heart instead of the head, or vice versa. Sometimes those decisions take a long time to have repercussions. But there are repercussions. There are always repercussions. Till we meet again. Maybe in Little Hope, maybe somewhere else. But be certain, we will meet again. It's inevitable. Want to spare me over till another year? Want to spare me over till another year? Out of nowhere, this thing just sent out an SOS. Guess we got a real life here. Whoa. What? Anthology 
is much loved and has an established pedigree across all forms of entertainment. Christ told tales by Nathaniel Hawthorne in 1837 to Clive Barker's Books of Blood in the mid 80s and with the likes of Blackwood, Poe and Lovecraft in between, short story horror writing has long been a popular format. Largely regarded as the first published horror anthology, Twice Told Tales is a collection of mostly previously published stories from The Token, an annual illustrated gift book published in Boston. The author of Twice Told Tales, Nathaniel Hawthorne, was born on July the 4th, 1804, in Salem, Massachusetts. His great-great-grandfather was John Haythorne, a Puritan, and one of the judges who presided at the Salem Witch Trials of 1692. In 1842, Edgar Allan Poe reviewed Twice Told Tales for Graham's magazine, concluding that Hawthorne was a man of indisputable genius. By this time, Poe, also from the state of Massachusetts, had already written his own collection of short stories for publication. This collection, titled Tales of the Grotesque and Arabesque, was published in two volumes in 1839. The horror anthology had become a recognized format, and after also writing many short stories for newspapers and magazines, Algernon Blackwood's first publication, The Empty House and Other Ghost Stories, was released in 1906. Blackwood went on to write such classics as The Willows and The Wendigo, which was first published in another anthology, The Lost Valley and Other Stories, in 1910. Fast forward 74 years to 1984 and the first publication of Books of Blood. Each book was a collection of horror stories written by British author Clive Barker the first of which catapulted Barker to legendary status in horror writing, with Stephen King proclaiming him the future of horror. Several of the stories from Books of Blood have been adapted successfully for film, including Rawhead Rex and The Midnight Meat Train. Barker adapted The Yattering Jack in 1986 for use in George A. Romero's anthology TV series, Tales from the Dark Side. I take it, we will remain. Short form storytelling arrived on a new medium in 1938 when the radio show, The Mercury Theatre on Air, broadcast an adaptation of Dracula. I have never seen Count Dracula by day. At sunrise, at the first clock crow, he is gone. The series was the creation of Orson Welles and John Houseman and became most famous for its broadcast of War of the Worlds, which terrified listeners, believing that the alien invasion was a reality. From 1942, the radio drama series Suspense broadcast more than 90 short plays on CBS radio for 20 years, often featuring some of Hollywood's leading stars. Initially, the series seldom used material that would be classified as horror, fantasy, or science fiction, but by the late 50s, this became a regular occurrence, including material such as H.P. Lovecraft's The Dunwich Horror. One episode, The Hitchhiker, broadcast in 1942, featured a performance by Orson Welles and was later adapted for an episode of The Twilight Zone in 1960. 1947 saw the debut of Quiet Please, a radio horror and fantasy series created by Willis Cooper. Cooper had been a writer for Orson Welles' Campbell Playhouse, which succeeded Mercury Theatre. Quiet Please was written and directed by Willis Cooper and featured Ernest Chappell. Quiet Please for tonight is called Camera Obscura. The play's scripts often broke the fourth wall by speaking directly to the listener, a technique much adopted in later horror anthologies. In his book, Terror on the Air, Horror Radio in America, Richard J. Hand wrote that Cooper had enjoyed creating roles for the audience, including implicating them in the action of the story itself, indicating a clear desire to create horror as interactive entertainment more than 70 years ago. The show ran for two years. Forward 50 more years in radio, and in October 2010, we see the debut of Larry Fessenden and Glenn McQuaid's radio show, Tales from Beyond the Pale. 
Successful genre filmmakers in their respective rights, the two began producing episodes under Fessenden's studio, Glass Eye Picks, influenced by the works of Boris Karloff, Peter Lorre, and Orson Welles. Fessenden would later partner with the show's sound designer, Graham Resnick, writing scripts of supermassive games' critically acclaimed horror debut, Until Dawn, and for the first game in their Dark Pictures horror anthology, Man of Medan. In film and TV, short format horror has been successfully represented many times since The Twilight Zone in 1959. Created and presented by Rod Serling, The Twilight Zone ran for five seasons on CBS from 1959 to 1964. Each show was a standalone story featuring characters faced by surreal and often disturbing events. Serling's introductions and conclusions to each show summarized the story and provided some justification for the events and, often, the moral of the story. In 2016, Rolling Stone placed The Twilight Zone at number seven in its list of the greatest shows of all time. The 1972 film, Tales from the Crypt, is highly regarded by fans of the genre. Starring Peter Cushing and Joan Collins and featuring Ralph Richardson as the Crypt Keeper, it is an anthology film based on stories from EC Comics and one of several amicus horror anthologies produced in that decade. And in 1989, HBO launched a horror anthology series under the same name, also based on EC Comics, which ran until July 1996. 1982 saw the release of Creepshow, a dark comic horror anthology film directed by George A. Romero. Influenced by and a homage to the material from the EC and DC comics of the 1950s, its entirely original material was written by Stephen King, and it is a somewhat tongue-in-cheek expression of the horror genre. 25 years on, and in 2007, Trick or Treat presents another set of horror shorts as a dark comedy horror anthology film. And then, in 2012, a very different anthology film with a very different tone, VHS. Created by Brad Miska and Bloody Disgusting, an American horror genre website and film production company, VHS is a much darker horror anthology film comprising six short horror stories and linked by a found footage theme. Two of the stories, Second Honeymoon and Tuesday the 17th, were written and directed by Ty West and Glenn McQuaid. Other examples in film and TV that are more than worthy of mention are Roger Corman's 1962 anthology, Tales of Terror, based on three Edgar Allan Poe short stories and featuring Peter Lorre, Vincent Price and Basil Rathbone. The 1963 Italian horror anthology, Black Sabbath, narrated by Boris Karloff. The TV series Night Gallery, a spiritual successor to, or certainly a close relative of, The Twilight Zone, fronted again by Rod Serling and focusing more directly on horror, which ran from 1969 to 1973. Stephen King's Cat's Eye of 1985. John Carpenter's 1993 film, Body Bags, featuring the likes of Sam Raimi, Wes Craven, and Mark Hamill, and Southbound, a 2016 road trip horror anthology by a number of the collaborators on VHS. From written fiction, through radio, cinema, and TV, and now video games, horror anthology is a format that both creators and horror fans enjoy. And it's a format that has existed for almost 200 years. Long may it continue. Hey, what's up, man? Conrad. Good to finally meet you, Conrad. This is Brad, by the way, my little bro. Hey, man. Want to crack a cold one with me? In The Man of Medan, I play a character named Conrad. And I think initially when we find Conrad, he is a sort of entitled guy, uh, a wealthy American who's on vacation. Where's the old crust bucket skipper anyhow? 
He's an adventurous guy. He lives off the cuff. He does what he wants. I'd invite you to make yourselves at home, but... Uh... And I think that's kind of fun to play as an actor. He has no sensor, he's no filter. So whatever circumstance he's put into, you know exactly how Conrad feels. And so it was kind of fun performance to start out being brash, kind of a silly guy, and just jump in and have fun with that. So is everybody on board and ready to go? Uh, you're selling, I'm buying. Well, I think Conrad and I have some similarities. I think the sense of humor and the sense of fun are similar between Conrad and I, but I will say that he's a little more aggressive and a little more outlandish than I am. Guys, look, I think we gotta listen to our experienced, beautiful, smart, and beautiful captain here. If she says we should do things Connie, the right- please, I didn't bring you on this trip to get laid. Wait, what? I think Conrad's <laughs> the kind of guy that I would like to be at a party with. You know, I'd like to have a barbecue and drink some beers with him. I don't know that Conrad and I would be best friends. I think we'd butt heads a little bit. Right on, Bradical. I like the cut of your ship. It's jib. Don't ruin it. I think the scenes that I've had the most fun with so far are basically when Conrad is going absolutely crazy. I don't want to give too much away, but there's a scene where these, these sort of fishermen interact with our divers, with our core crew here, and he's just a bit of an asshole. Hey, we got damage here, you see this? We can take care of this, man, it's not a problem. I mean, what do you think, like 10 bucks cover it? Oh, whoops, my bad, let's make it 20. Okay, okay, hold on, I got this. Well, shoot, you, you think it's more like 30? I can do 30. All right. You drive a hard bargain, but I'm with you. Here, you know what? Let's just throw in the whole pot. That's yours. You go ahead. Let's go. No! He just got an attitude. He's brash. These people are messing with his group, and he just kind of lets loose and talks trash to them. And as a guy who would never do that in real life, it's uh, a lot of fun to just kind of let Conrad flow, say whatever he wants. You are an idiot. They left, didn't they? That doesn't make you any less of an idiot. You know, the only thing funnier than seeing you try to buy your way out of that situation is watching you put your money to waste. Got a smile out of you. Worth every penny. I got... One of the most interesting and one of the key moments that sticks out for me is Conrad's decision in the first act of the game either to stay with the group or potentially just take off. Storm's eight miles away. They came here on a boat. Maybe we can take it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a speedboat. I can get out through the window. We gotta break these off first. Too loud. They'll hear it. But we're gonna break them during the thunder. <sighs> Good call. Don't leave us here, okay? And I think, again, this is what's interesting. Depending on how the player sculpts the story, Conrad can become a coward, essentially, and desert his friends and his family, or become a hero and stay. These fuckers need to pay. So that, to me, is very, very interesting. Two very human choices, and depending on how our player decides to live with these characters, can totally change the outcome of the game. So I think that I enjoy when Conrad makes the heroic choice and gets to stick around. He obviously gets to see more of the adventure, but it's just as possible that he tries to save his own life and takes off. Ooh, wow, that was intense. <laughs> That's one way to put it. You got a better way to put it? All the characters do have very strong personalities and drives. Leave, leave, leave! I think Conrad is the instigator. Good news, bad news, bad news. I don't see how this could get any worse. I think he is the one that really starts the confrontation with the fishermen. These are kind of, maybe the fishermen I pissed off earlier. Oh, God damn it, Conrad. Great, just great. And the good news? So I think in a lot of ways, Conrad is there to stir the pot and create drama. Uh, I recognize them. How was that good news? I thought you were gonna ask the good news first. You're such an idiot, Jesus. Do I prefer playing the good guy or the bad guy? I think that there's, there's fun in both. To be honest, I don't get to play the bad guy as much as I get to play the good guy, so I think I relish those moments where I get to play the darker side of things. But I think every good hero has that balance, has that dark side. I think a good guy who only is doing good things is kind of boring. You just had to piss them off, didn't you? So I think that there's elements of both sides in both characters. And the best villains are the villains that don't think they're doing anything wrong. Their motivation is not like, oh, I'm a mustache twirling bad guy. It's like, no, they're doing what's right for them. It just happens to be against what most people think is the right thing to do. If I can't shoot them as payback, at least I could give them a nice jab with a sharp knife. 
Because I'd had some experience working with motion capture and games before, this experience was much easier for me coming right in. I didn't feel like I was jumping into the deep end. What I really like is that all the actors are constantly there all the time. There's the ability to work off each other without the pressure of specific lighting and marks. There's a freedom to that that I really, really enjoy. It's been really good. It's been very kind of a free experience as far as like motion capture performance. You got a funny way of saying, thank you, Conrad. You're a piece of work, Conrad. I'm not all work, I'm a little play, too. Hashtag wink. Hello. I am the curator. The curator of stories, stories of love and hate, greed and beauty, life and death, stories such as this one. The curator of the Dark Pictures Anthology bridges between the player and the story being very aware of what they've done, but also much more aware than the player about what's actually going on in the story and what the context is and what the scenario is. What do you think happened to this guy? Now, for the first time, for some reason that he himself doesn't even understand, he's been given the opportunity to talk to somebody, and that somebody is the player. As far as he knows, it's always been him that's done this job, and nobody else. And within his library is the story of everybody's life and death. There's even rooms in there that he can't remember ever going in, but he's way too busy to go and explore because there's always another end of life to record and document. Clothes are so important because they provide an insight into the character. They explain where the character's been, they describe where he's going, they suggest motive. We want the audience to perceive him as having everything completely in control. So all of the ideas of his clothes being tailored to his body, it's really important to us. We worked with a costume designer. He did a lot of research into the authenticity of the materials and textures. He provided us with lots of authentic high resolution reference. He even gave us material swatches. It was really useful for us because looking at the folds, looking at the visual language of cloth, how do they sit on the character? Is it working from a distance? What's the weight of the material? It gave us a really good platform in order to produce high quality realistic materials. I'm here to record the story you choose to tell. I think that whenever you're dealing with a realistic human acting performance and facial expressions, that part of it is so key to transferring the emotion that you want to over to the player. Just the definition and detail that you need now is quite challenging. But there are repercussions. In terms of cameras, it's quite interesting as well because we've talked a little bit before about how we use skewed angles, upshots, tilts and all that kind of thing to create this feeling of unease and anxiety in the horror moments. And for the curator, it was quite the opposite, actually. He's very much in control and he knows everything about the game you're playing and he's very much at home in his own environment. So we took the approach to have a lot more flattering shots, a lot more level shots. You look at him at a natural height. You're never like below or above him. And it creates this veneer of control. It's almost like it's very straightforward and he's just delivering you these statements. You see, we each make decisions according to our own moral compass. And of course he's British. As soon as we'd established that and who he was and what his personality was, our minds went pretty much straight to Pip Torrens to deliver the performance. And Pip's done a brilliant job bringing everything that we wanted in the curator to life on the screen and pretty much everything that we shot was nailed on first take by Pip. But the truth of this story isn't fixed. Far from it. A story can change a great deal when told from a different perspective. One thing that was really important for us with the art direction was to somehow differentiate him from the rest of the game that you're experiencing. And with that we could make a really interesting contrast because as the player you might be experiencing all this horror, all this craziness, and all of a sudden you're taken out to quite a different and quite an unusual place. So that was a really fun thing to play with. We tried to play up on that contrast and really signal to the player that there was a change happening. The curator addresses the player directly. He's quite ambiguous, he's quite mysterious. You're really not sure if he's there to help you or hinder you sometimes. And I wanted that to kind of be reflected in the art. 
the corridor that he is in at the start of the game and where you see him a lot of times, we wanted to get this feel of an almost infinite corridor that's got this maze-like feel. It's not a set out space that you automatically understand as a viewer when you see it. You're not sure how long it goes on, how many paths there are, how much of a maze this corridor is. So to light that, we wanted to get this feel where there's not markers that tell you this is where you are right now in the corridor, you've been here before just to increase that feeling of not being fully aware of your surroundings and add to the mystery of the scene. And then he goes into his repository, which is a huge vault of books and secrets with his main desk right in the middle. He's got large windows for light, a skylight above that would also let a lot of light in, a mezzanine floor, a marble fireplace, classical, opulent, sophisticated. The central feature of the repository is the curator's desk. So we researched how that might look and wanted to make it look a big, substantial piece of furniture. We added a lot of scroll work and detail to the front and rear. All of the things that you'd expect, the brass fittings for the drawers. There's quite a lot of detail went into that and we thought we might be seeing that quite close as well again. So in the end, it fits nicely within its environment. It references some of the Victorian era detail that you might see on a piece like that. The creator has the ability to access stories to the pictures on the wall. They're almost portal through to another world. And that all had to fit within our architectural environment. So we looked at very ornate framings, large pictures that would hang on the walls that would feel correct and not out of place and something of this nature. We thought about where we could include light sources that would be interesting and would put light in the right areas of the room. The skylight's a really good example. We decided that having this top-down ambience would really bed the scene in nicely and create this nice veneer to it. And then add in another number of interesting light sources that we can use for accents, such as a fireplace, such as the candles, that just are there to give you that extra range of colour if you need it. They're there to draw the eye of the player to what we want to show them. It's not my place to interfere, but I might be persuaded to offer the occasional hint. Here's one for free. It's a strange place. Who, who is this guy? Why is he talking to me? Where am I now? I, you know, I was just on a ship having some horror happening, and now I'm here. And this guy has the appearance of being there to help you, but he seems like such a strange guy, and the environment he's in is so different. There's a certain ambiguity to it, and we wanted the player to question whether or not he's on their side, or whether or not he's kind of playing his own game with them. The curator's no ordinary person and his repository is no ordinary place. And you'll get the chance to see him again in the rest of the Dark Pictures anthology. We will meet again. It's inevitable.